no matter who you love. Our scripture reading this morning is from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through to 37. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And in reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense that you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of Robert? Robbers, the expert in the law replied. The one who had mercy on him, Jesus told him, go and do likewise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Neil, you and I are going to have a little conversation, and, uh, and maybe people here will get a, a little bit of sense of, of who you are. I think all of you know Reverend Neil has been, been around our church uh, on many occasions, filling in, helping with uh, presbytery and regional work and those, mm-hmm. those sorts of things. Absolutely. So, so welcome. We're delighted to have you with us in this, in this role. Um, so, Neil, I, in your bio... Um, we heard that you grew up on a dairy farm. Correct. In rural New Brunswick or outside of Sussex. Um, just curious how you hinted at it in your bio, but tell us a little bit about how that experience informed your faith, your spirituality. Sure. Um, what, you know, as you look back and reflect, what, what stands out and what was important to you? Well, now I have to go back 54 years of, of stories and history to capture that. Okay, it's going to be a long one then, right? <laughs> Just to let you all know that uh, uh, I, was, I was born in 1967, which is Canada's centennial. So I, I always told myself that uh, uh, I was mom and dad's gift to Canada for their 100th anniversary. <laughs> and uh, being the youngest of, of, of eight children, um, I tell myself that mom and dad said they finally reached perfection. Right. And so there, they, this... needed, they needed no more. Uh, growing up in a family of, uh, with one brother and six sisters, um, it was, it's actually been a joy. It's been a phenomenal time of, of family and, and, and uh, just that, that bigness of it all. And uh, just a little bit of background of that. I, I think we have, uh, Philip and I, I think we have 17 or 18 
uh, nieces and nephews, and I think we're getting into the mid-30s of great nieces and nephews. And they're getting to that age where it um, won't be too much longer and I may be a great, great uncle. Wow. So, yeah, so, it's a, uh, so, so family, family has always been a very important part in that. I think that connectedness um, uh, between family and the importance of, of family um, has always been instilled upon us. Uh, growing up on the dairy farm, I mean, we, we were part of a community that has deep roots. It's very much like, like several of the families here in Lunenburg County, that you have deep, deep roots that go back many generations and uh, longer times. Of, um, of being settlers and being um, immigrants to, to a country. And so that deep rootedness of family and community has always been very important. Uh, growing up on a dairy farm, uh, what that really instilled within us, and particularly with our parents, um, who, were the, who were the dairy farmers, and they were very much together in the farming. And from that, we learned that you know you need other people in order to do a, a job. You you do not stand alone. That you know every task you do required the dedication of other people, and that you were not alone. And I think that sense of, of always being together uh, reaffirmed to us the presence, uh, like with our faith, of the presence of God and the importance of community. Uh, the spirituality part of that came out of my life experiences has always been that deep rootedness to connection, to creation. And growing up on the land, uh, working the land, getting your fingers right down dirty in the land, uh, has, I think in my later years, has informed me that I am a person who feels closer to the presence of God and the spirit of God through our connection to creation. Mm -hmm. And so I, it's, it's that deep part of, of feeling at one with, with the spirit of, of creator and within our, within our community and within our, uh, our world. And so where I feel connected most to, to the spirit of God and the presence of God is when surrounded by creation. And that creation can be the dirt beneath your feet, it can be the sky over your head, it can be the beauty around you, and with that beauty around you is also the people that are all part of, of God's wonderful and diverse creation. Mm -hmm. it's always, it's always, I didn't grow up on a farm, I grew up in my summers working on a farm. And you know, as we all know, we're in sort of an environmental crisis right now, and, and there seems to be this loss of connection mm -hmm. to creation and what you're speaking of. And it's always struck me that in, in, in farming or agriculture, people, people have that connection. They get the connection between what they're growing and what they're eating, and, and we sort of have this gap. I guess, I guess my question, Neil, would be, how, how do you think we can reconnect with that? You know, what do we need to do, I guess, as, as people, as, as followers of, of Jesus, of course, but to recapture that, that sense of connection, that sense of that rhythm of life, right, mm -hmm. that goes into to farming that uh, many of us don't farm anymore, right? Yeah. Some of us maybe grow gardens and things like that, but, but that, that disconnect is very prevalent right now in terms of how we're kind of living our, our everyday lives, but what might you say about how we, how we could reconnect to that? Yeah, okay. Jeff said he was gonna give me the questions before we had this time so that I'd have time for prepared answers, and he didn't. No, no. So he's coming up with, with, uh, with questions that uh, I don't know the, all the answers to, so if- You I, have to know uh, all the answers. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'll admit right now, I do not know all the answers, <laughs> and uh, I never will know all the answers. <laughs> Uh, so that that connecting wise, you know, just as you as you were talking about that, the the, the right now we're in that, that spectacular season of autumn colors. Although I grieve and mourn the, the the time of summer behind us and the summer the season of spring that is behind us, um, I think that being attentive to the cycles of the seasons as a blessing for us to remind us, even if we're not connected to the soil, connected to the earth, connected to the farming, recognizing the, the beauty of creation around us, the turning of the seasons, to remind us about the ways in which we are connected to the seasons of life, 
the seasons of growing, the seasons of rest, the season of flourishing, the season of beauties. Um, all those things just remind us that even if we're not got our fingers in the dirt, we're not connected to, to the soil, we're not growing our own crops, that you know, there's many a multitude of ways in which we can be connected to all the beauty that is around us and the seasons of creation and the season of how God is abundant among us. So even if we're not growing our own food, even if we're, we're not tending to gardens, that, that doesn't eliminate us from having a connection to the creator and the beauty of creation. So that, that, I think that would be one way in which we can continue to be connected and affirming ourselves, that turning, the transition, the changes, the growing, the resting. Yeah, it seems to me like part of that is, is for us to pause, you know, and to, to take in that beauty, mm-hmm. right? And to, to think about it a little bit more deeply than, oh, those are just pretty colors or, yep. or that's a nice squash or whatever, yep. is to think about the, the many hands and, and all that goes into uh, creating good food and abundance yep. for us. Um, you know, we're well aware of, of um, you know, the challenges in agriculture these days mm-hmm. and the environmental sort of concerns. And I think if we, if we do take a moment to, to get, not only give thanks, but to think about what's our, what are the ways we can contribute or help or not yeah. um, in those things, I think it's, it's powerful. And I know as a, as a child growing up on a farm, that was probably just a sixth sense for you, mm-hmm. right? You know, I mean, that just became part of the fabric of who you are and, yeah. and why you and Philip enjoy gardening and flowers and, and all the things you yeah. do. So I wonder, what kind of little boy were you, Neil? I was the perfect child. Yeah. <laughs> the baby of the family. The baby of the family. A bunch uh, of sisters. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I learned very early on in life to be honorable and respectful of women. Mm. And that is something that is, you know, it's in a world that is often uh, ruled by a patriarchy that, you know, the women and from my family and the equal equality between my father and my mother in farming. And uh, just using that term that, you know, it's, uh, oh, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a farm wife. No, my mother was a farmer right. along with our father. That you know they, they shared that equal that 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 part of it, uh, so the equality and respect and and for women has always been a very strong part of just growing up. Right, what a wonderful example, right, mm-hmm. that you had in your in your parents. And so, you're coming to work with us in in this role of pastoral care. Pastoral care is sort of one of those churchy terms, really, you know, that that we talk about. But what is it? Pastoral care. Caring for one another. And that's not just the, the, the caring of the spiritual care, but also the physical care. It's about um, nurturing and creating um, that people know that they are included, mm-hmm. uh, cared for, remembered, loved. And so as you think about... Um you know, your work with us, which is, you know, in lots of ways probably similar to the work you're already doing in, with, your, with your other congregations. But, you know, there's been this, um, there's a, there, I don't want to know if it's a trend or a moving away from, from the one minister doing everything. And I think we all know that in, in the United Church right now, ministers are few and far between. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of us grew up with a model, which was there's this one minister um, who does all the pastoral care, who does the worship and, you know, preaching and men and all those sorts of things. But we're talking about pastoral care. And, and we've talked a lot about, mm-hmm. about this at, at our church, and you and I have chatted about it too, that, um, that we, there's, there's a need to move away from one person doing all the pastoral care to owning it as, as a community. Could you talk a little bit about why that's important um, as a Christian community and... and you know, again, we've grown up with that model. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's problematic for pragmatic reasons, but, but maybe speak a little bit to the spirituality or the theological reasons why we might, might shift our thinking a bit on that. Yeah, and then the ministries that I've been involved in uh, when I was the five years in Saskatchewan and the 16 years that I've been at uh, La Havre, Dublin with, uh, with that pastoral charge, uh, I've been the solo minister doing everything. So that's the, the whole gamut of worship, pastoral care, education, meetings, all those things. Um, and recognizing that, you know, the care for a community doesn't 
shouldn't be the role of just the minister who is the paid accountable one. You know, it becomes a responsibility of the entire community um, that we care for each other. And there's, there's still that, that, that image that um, pastoral care is not real pastoral care until it's done by the minister. But we recognize that within a congregation that everyone in ways take care of each other. And it could be through those, those, those connections that you make beyond the, the times of worship when you're here together. It takes place in those times when you, when you make phone calls, when you, when you stop by to drop something off at someone's door. Uh, it becomes a responsibility of, of an entire community to care for each other, to support each other, to encourage each other. Uh, and that way we become the ministry of, it becomes the ministry of all. And uh, so, and, and it is, it's, it's, it's a difficult part to do, a pastoral care ministry, good, effective pastoral care ministry of keeping in connection with one another. And I think that, that we become a community of believers, a community of support, a community of love, and we need to hold on to that sense of community as we continue to care for one another through our words, through our connections, uh, through the simple act of, of writing and sending a card to say, thinking of you, happy birthday, best wishes, get well soon. And so that extends beyond just the one, it becomes a ministry of all. Right. And so we're all in this together. We are, so on a, on a practical note, how are we gonna do that? How do you, how do you envision sort of as, as you sort of um, serve with us? Yep. Um, what does that kind of look like, I guess, so people have a sense of kind of what you'll be up to? Okay, all right. Um, one of the things that, that, that I'm engaged in this fall um, is taking a, an online course on pastoral care. And this course is, is offered through, um, I can never remember the name, but it's out of Ottawa. Ottawa Pastoral Training Institute. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's it, that's it. And so it's a Zoom session every uh, two hours on every uh, Monday afternoon that I'm participating in. But there's people that are taking that course from across the country who are involved in it. Last week I was out doing a pastoral visit and I was coming home and, uh, and I thought, shoot, I missed my afternoon session. I had in my calendar that it was the time but I had Ontario's time oh. instead of our time. So I was actually 15 minutes early for the session and not 45 minutes late. But there's individuals uh, from our county here, from Lunenburg County, who are also taking the course with us. And what that is, means is that one of the visions that, that we had talked about, that Jeff and I had talked about, is how can we broaden the aspect of pastoral care to the wider community. We recognize that within Lunenburg County at this moment, um, within the 10 pastoral charges, seven pastoral charges, eight pastoral, I can't remember, uh, there's very few people who are engaged in ministry, formal ministry, like Jeff and I, within this county, leaving a multitude of pastoral charges without pastoral care. Our vision is that people would take this course within Lunenburg County, that together we could create a pastoral care support team of people within this congregation, our congregation, and the various other pastoral charges around here, so that we can create a supportive team of how to reach out and connect with each other and with the community, to so support our congregations through this time when there is not uh, individuals who are doing formal ministry within pastoral charges. So one of my roles will be is to assist the, the pastoral care team that is in place here to be an avenue through which we can gather and support one another and to hear the concerns of the congregation and lift up those individuals that may need a little bit extra care that is beyond the pastoral care team in which I could be attentive to. It'll also be a time for me to check in into the hospital and knowing that hospital visitations right now continue to go through like, like with the congregations, with changes and, and how, how we can get together as a community in times of worship, the, the care within the hospital and my ability to go in and visit people continues to be on a constantly changing and, and fluctuating time. Um, 
but it'll be that level of care that I'll be able to, to offer this congregation. Um, in the meantime, while I'm offering this congregation uh, that care, I'll also be offering my home congregation of La Haven, Dublin, and Westside United that same care. Uh, so it'll be a double duty of, of care. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those, those that, that being able to go out and, and to do some visits um, will be, a, a, the use of my time will be to be the blending of two. I may be doing some at the same time as I'm doing for this congregation, I'll be doing for, for my own congregation. And, uh, but it'll be that support and that avenue through which I can, I can assist the congregation with their pastoral care and inspire and encourage and support the, pay, uh, the pastoral care team that is in place within this congregation. Right. Yeah, it's very much a, a bit of a hybrid model from what we're used to, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a blend, and, and we have individuals being trained and individuals that um, you know, want to serve our ministry in that way and mm -hmm. will be in touch with folks. And of course, when when there's higher needs, right, you're, you're available for that, and, uh, and we'll work together to, to kind of create that community yeah. of care that, that and, you're And one of. of the things we're hoping at is that as we continue to see how this goes uh, with, the, with the pastoral care uh, team here and with the pastoral care course, that um, future opportunities for individuals who would like to be involved in pastoral care, that course that we're taking this year um, is offered in the future. And uh, so hopefully that we can gain some information about how they do that course, and uh, some of the information and the training that they use for that course, that we might find effective to be able to share that with a broader group within Lunenburg County to expand our ministry and realizing that we are in this ministry together as the United Church of Canada, as congregations within the United Church of Canada, um, in, a, in a broader sense. So create a, a, a good pastoral care uh, within Lunenburg County. Excellent. I don't know if you know, um, there used to be a TV show on called Inside the Actor's Studio. Must have been before my time. Yeah. <laughs> and he would always end with some rapid fire questions. Okay. So you haven't seen these. Yeah, um, I haven't seen anything, Jeff. They're, they're, because I'm making it up. But, um, um, but, the spirit, but they're, but they're this, fun. This is, this is what I always call the wiggle room for the spirit, <laughs> you know, and when we have things so cut and dry, that we'd leave no room for the spirit to wiggle in our midst. That's right, I like a wiggly spirit. Yeah. <laughs> um, favorite hymn? Uh, this is the one when you, when you had asked me that earlier this week. This, you did ask me I a did, question yes. this week. It was, make me a channel of your peace. Those words within that are, are, have always been a special words for me that uh, it, yeah. it says a lot about, um, about about me and about being an avenue through which all those gifts that God gives us and the spirit of God in our midst uh, comes through those words, not him. Least favorite him. I would have to hold in, uh, in my heart right now my, my, my grandmother, and that is abide with me. And, uh, and her echoes of how she did not like that hymn because it was associated too much with Remembrance Day and the acknowledgement of her um, oldest son's uh, death in World War II and how she always proclaimed that that song was never to be played at her funeral or she'd sit right up and look at us. <laughs> so that is one of the ones okay. that, it, you know, that, that, that distaste that she had for that particular hymn. She passed on. Is, is yeah, it's yeah. there, so, yeah. Your favorite word. Oh, gracious sakes, my favorite word. Philip might know. Philip, do you have any idea of what, uh, what my favorite word would be? That you can say in church, Philip. I, 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 I hold on to the, the, the memory of uh, Reverend Clifford Elliott, who used to write the back page of, of uh, The Observer for many years. And I had the opportunity when I was doing my internship at Bloor Street United in downtown Toronto to spend time with him uh, about once a week. And, uh, and he said, if I nat her on long, oh, he's, he's I always thought I was a wise person. And his sister who, you know, was older than him, cut him right down. And he said, she said, Cliff, she said, you're not wise, you just natter on all the time, you're bound to say something wise every once in a while. So I don't know if I have a, a proper word or not, but if I natter on long enough, the same word will come up. What's a sound or noise that you love? The sound or noise that I love? Hmm. 
it would have to be the sound of robins in the springtime. A sound or noise you hate. The howling of the winter wind. If you could try or attempt any profession other than ministry, what would you like to do? Hmm. If I could do something else other than this. I already did it, so I can't do that. I did that, I can't do that. <laughs> I did work in a, I, like I always, I always enjoyed working in the garden centers, and I, I, I had managed a garden center for a few years back in the, back in the 90s. Um, so that's out. I worked in the engineering field uh, in electrical design and drafting, so I did that. Um, I don't want to go back there. Uh, I hung out of, an, of a helicopter scanning for forest fires, uh, hot spots and forest fires back in the late 80s, so I can't do that again. Um, it was, what would you like to attempt? <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> I thought years ago I would like to, I, I thought I would either be a minister or, or involved in the funeral industry. Hmm. Which is a ministry. Which, in which is, yeah. you know, there, I, I've got to have a lot of that experience, so, but yeah. that's not something I want to do either now. Hmm. How I, about, think, I think the job of retirement. Is yeah, yeah, <laughs> retirement or pastoral care minister with Bridgewater United. There's sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay, well, thanks. thank you for uh, spending a few minutes with me and for sharing some of your story with us so we can get to know you a little better. And we'll all get to know Neil um, a little better over the coming months. But uh, I think we already know you and feel like you're part of our community um, as you have been, you know, over the last number of years. So thanks, yeah. Neil, and welcome. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Today, O oh God, you remind us of how we are called into love and to care and to be present to one another. And so we give thanks for the gift of your spirit, of friends, of this community, of all who show us your grace and your love. Today, O oh God, we pray that you would awaken us to this new possibility within ourselves to indeed be your love in the world. Amen. Make me
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.